Hello everyone, MarshV13 here, and I just installed X-Plane Mobile on my iPad about a week ago, and I've been having such a good time with the application, which I find far superior to uh, other flight simulator offerings on mobile devices, that uh, I wanted to share a full flight tutorial experience with you that will take us if I'm successful from gate to gate, from Boston's Logan International Airport to New York's LaGuardia in a 737-800 aircraft, and we will explore every single inch of the flight deck, every single instrument, every single control switch, and every single step so uh, thank you for joining me let's get started so i'm on the x-plane main menu and i am going to go to free flight here and i'm presented with a list of aircraft We're already on boeing 737-800 so let me just switch to delta because uh that's the airline most likely to be operating our route of flight today and let's see we're sitting at katl today so let's go to kbos boston logan and i'm going to start a new route and it's telling us 15 right is uh active at the moment we could we could uh, depart from any runway but 15 right sounds reasonable to me and let's make it easy on ourselves and park at a relatively close gate. So we will park at E8 on the ramp. And weather is, uh, let's see, winds are calm and a relatively sunny day with some light clouds. And it's almost noon time. Our flight's going to be probably less than an hour in duration. And no failures. Let's go ahead and start. Actually, before I do that, let's go back to our aircraft menu and look at the weight and balance. So our payload is 34 Point five tons. We have 8,000 pounds of fuel loaded, which should be just about right for this very quick shuttle flight. And center of gravity is zero feet. And we definitely want to start with a cold and dark cockpit. So that leaves us with a total weight of 133,838 pounds. All right, so here we are at the gate at uh, Boston Logan, and as you can see, the uh, 737-800 cockpit is cold and dark. We can change that, of course, but uh, first let's make sure we're in the right place. Look at an external view of our aircraft. Nothing is started. You, can, you can't hear neither an APU running in the tail nor and uh, engine running and uh, you can see behind us uh, probably Massachusetts Bay and looks like runway 15 right so we're in the right place presumably at gate E8 and uh, one of the cool features that is apparently new to X-Plane period but it's certainly new to me since uh, I just installed this application last week, is that some of these larger airports, in fact, the majority of the airports in uh, the X-Plane universe, GLOMO, uh, include ground services. So we can certainly call for a pushback. We're not quite ready to do that yet. So if we hit the request services button, it's going to send fuel trucks and catering trucks and all sorts of things. So they're going to come, they're going to, uh, to fuel us and 
cater us and load baggage and uh, we shall ready the aircraft since we just did uh, our informal external inspection. So back to the flight deck here. I'm going to, uh, whoops. I'm going to find the battery, the master battery switch and turn that on. And so now you can see we have lights and um, let's run a couple of tests. So the first one I'm gonna do is a, it's the stall warning. So we should get a kind of a clacker sound. There you go. Another test we can do is our warning light system. And uh, as you can see that illuminated all the warning lights. Uh, 737 works like a lot of other Boeing aircraft. It's uh, basically a, uh, a relatively dark cockpit, uh, except when something goes wrong. And so you can see all of these warning and faults and failure lights have illuminated everything looks about right. Whoops, don't think I meant to do all that. And uh, so the only other thing we'll do is we can test our um, fire panel. So let me, let me turn that off. So uh, these uh, fire indicators illuminate and you can actually uh, lift these and then um, launch a fire extinguisher bottle. We don't want to do that right now. I'm just going to cancel the fire warning and the master caution light. And our tests were successful. So uh, let's turn on standby power and then uh, ground power, which is available while we are here on the ground. And we can disconnect ground once we start the APU or the engines will start the APU here. Now the APU is, uh, stands for auxiliary power unit. It's basically a tiny engine in the tail of the aircraft. And it works like a lot of other engines, except it's not gonna propel us through the air. So it's just gonna provide us uh, with power while we're on the ground. So I'm gonna flip this switch, which should start the APU, which, as I mentioned, is basically a very tiny engine, so it has a lot of the characteristics of the other of the main engines. It has, for instance, uh, exhaust gas temperature, which is increasing here, which means the APU is indeed starting, but uh, not quite ready to power our aircraft yet. So while it's doing that, let's go set up the flight management computer. So I'm gonna go to the route page here, and I'm going to enter in our route, which is simply from KBOS, Boston Logan, to KLGA, New York LaGuardia, and you can hear that uh, APU starting. It's probably just about uh, ready to provide that power which should enable us to start the APU generators. But let's finish this first. I'm gonna enter in a random flight number here Delta 3942, why not? We'll execute that. And um, let's now enter a departure for KBOS. So I think we said we're going to depart runway 15 right, which is right behind us. And let's take the PATS 5 uh, SID and I'm going to execute that. And while we're at it, we might as well input our arrival information. So we expect the HARP-3 uh, arrival into ILS-22. And uh, let's see, and that should take us just over the East River. It'll be a... Uh, um, a it'll be all water right before the threshold so it should be
quite uh, beautiful and dramatic. So, <clears throat> the selection of the departure and arrivals should have placed uh, waypoints in our leg screen, and indeed it has. So I'm just going to review this right quick. So you can see we have some discontinuities, we have some redundant waypoints. So I'm going to get rid of those, but the other thing I'm going to do is between our uh, departure and our arrival, I'm going to add a waypoint called Nelly. And uh, actually, before we do that, let's just uh, take a quick opportunity to review the departures and arrivals that we've just entered into the computer. So uh, let's, well, let's look at the airport diagram first. So this is the official airport diagram for Boston Logan International Airport. And it's got some frequencies listed over there on the right. Um, we are in Terminal E, Gate uh, Echo 8. And uh, so that's part of this, the inset of this map here. So that would put us right here. And that means 15, uh, uh, 15 right is right here in the center of the screen there. So if we push back with our tail to the left and then we start, uh, we would taxi uh, over through this uh, alpha taxiway and then uh, turn right, cross the Bravo taxiway and uh, onto the Lima taxiway and then make a right turn onto 15 right and then off we go. Um, now as for our departure, the PATS 5 departure, the purpose of a departure like this is to get us to the waypoint after which the departure is named, which in this case is PATS 5. Uh, we're going to be departing runway uh, 15 right, which is right here in the center, following uh, the 150 degree radial. And then uh, at that point, we should intercept the uh, FOX uh, waypoint and uh, at a uh, vector of 91 degrees, go on to BRRO, and then uh, JD, and make this sort of long right turn uh, next to Humo, then uh, Kenway, and then follow that on to Pats. So we're gonna be making just one big circle and it's going to be a complete 180. That's our departure procedure. And then um, our, right, our route of flight, uh, looking at the map here, will again uh, take us to this Nelly waypoint here uh, over what looks like Massachusetts into Connecticut and finally into uh, New York, at which point we will intercept uh, near White Plains, New York, near the, uh, I guess that would be the Long Island Sound here. Uh, we would make a right turn towards Manhattan and Queens, uh, passing over the Bronx into LaGuardia. And so our arrival, HARP 3 arrival, same idea here. The idea is to get us to HARP, which will allow us to intercept uh, the uh, uh, 224 heading, which, which should put us uh, right on track into uh, onto the ILS for runway 22 to LaGuardia. And I believe that we are going to uh, intercept this at the Valry, V-A-L-R-E waypoint here, and then pick up the uh, Bayesi uh, navigational point and then, uh, and then Harp, which again will dump us onto the ILS for 2-2. Speaking of the ILS for 2-2, uh, 
this is the official approach plate. Um, important information here, the ILS frequency. ILS is an instrument landing system for those who are unaware. So uh, that we, if we tune to this frequency, 110.5, the ground-based uh, ILS will basically beam back to our aircraft. Uh, uh, the approach path tells whether we're too high, too low. The, the course, which is very important because we need to enter that into our uh, mode control panel is 224, that's the heading of the runway. And uh, runway is 7,000 feet long, which is not very long. And it has an elevation of 21 feet. Gives us some additional information about how to contact the tower. And then this is, uh, this is our, our pathway, an overhead view here. And this is a side view. So uh, we're gonna hit Yeoman at an altitude of 3,000 and uh, that should uh, will we'll be on a 224 degree heading which is runway heading at that point and then we'll start our uh, three degree glide slope descent at uh, the at Greco and that will at 1900 feet above ground or excuse me 1900 feet MSL and that will take us all the way down to runway 22. And there's runway 22 right here. And our for, our, for the missed approach, we would climb to 3,000. This is for a go around. And uh, we would proceed to Proud. And uh, we would assume a hold there at 3,000 feet. And uh, so the airport again is uh, is right it's right here and uh, we would just proceed straight ahead to the proud uh, uh, proud waypoint in the event of, uh, of uh, missed approach and that's where our hold is so we should see everything that we just reviewed in our flight plan so let me go back here and let me go back to the first page. So as promised, uh, our departure is on runway 15 right. And then we begin this long right turn to Fox and then BRO, then JD, then Humo, then Kenwe, and then uh, Pats, which would complete our departure. And then we don't need to go back to KBOS, I don't think. So let me get rid of that. And then we have a discontinuity. Nelly is our sort of our, is the waypoint that we added. And so it's our supplementary sort of midway point. Then we have a discontinuity, which is not a good thing. So we're gonna take the beginning of the harp arrival, which is the Valerie waypoint, and right over our discontinuity with that. And uh, we don't don't think we need LaGuardia or Vector here. After after we hit Harp and Crayley, we should uh, uh, intercept the approach for 22 right, which starts at Yeoman, and then the uh, the glide slope is intercepted at Greco. So let's take Yeoman and right over our discontinuity there, and then. Uh, Take Yeoman again and bring that back up to just after Crayley. And that is the right altitude, 1900. And then uh, in the event of a missed approach, we would climb to 3000 feet to Proud at runway heading basically. And there's a hold in place there. So that looks good. The only thing you don't see is next to each of these waypoints is a speed, a target speed and a target altitude. And we don't have any target altitudes until we get to the uh, ILS approach. So in order to fix that, I'm gonna go to the cruise page and I'm going to input a flight level 31,000 feet, feet, FL310. And if we go back to the legs page, 
we should now, now we have, as you can see, some additional speeds, and we do have a waypoint at which uh, we, we should be at cruising altitude, flight level 310 at 0.8 Mach, which is a percentage of the speed of sound. And then we have our descent down to flight level 270, and then 11,000 feet at uh, 290 knots indicated airspeed, and then below 10,000, we reduce to 240 knots all the way down to 1,900 feet. So that is looking a bit better to me. So, and if we want to view this on our horizontal situation indicator, we can just, uh, can just expand the range here a bit. And there's our entire flight plan. It certainly looks contiguous. It certainly looks to be, um, you know, we're facing uh, south, uh, south or west southwest right now, which is just about the direction that New York would be. So I'm certainly happy. I'm going to reduce things down to a 10 nautical mile range on the HSI. Okay. Took a bit longer than I was hoping for, but <laughs> with all this time having passed, I'm sure that the service trucks are long gone and they are and we have the APU running now you can hear it it's in it's right there in the back of the tail so now that we have our uh, engine gas temperature up and you can see we now have APU power available let's turn on our a the uh, APU generator and we don't need ground power anymore, so I'm gonna turn that off. And I'll turn the fuel pumps on. They presumably loaded fuel, yep. So we have 8,000 pounds, that's 4,000 in the uh, left tank, 4,000 in the right, and zero in the center. So I've turned on our fuel pumps for, there are two fuel pumps each, uh, the left and right tank, and two for the center, but we don't need the center pumps. So uh, for the packs, we'll turn the uh, APU bleed air on, and we'll also turn on the um, hydraulic and electrical pumps for engines one and two. At this point, I believe we are ready to start our engines, but we're not gonna do that here at the gates. I'll do that when we push back. So for now, just a couple of things that we can do now so that we don't have to do them later. I'm gonna set the course to runway heading. We're taking off from runway 15 right again, which is uh, gonna be a heading of 150. So we're basically taking off to the south southeast. I'm just going to set the speed bug here to 240 knots. We shouldn't need any of this. This is sort of an in case stuff happens kind of a thing. And I'll do, I'll set the same course for the first officers, MCP and altitude. Let's just assume we're going to head straight to 31,000. ATC isn't going to give us any altitude constraints. And, uh,. Let's turn the flight director on, and so the flight director should now appear in on our primary flight display. Indeed, it does. It's this uh, these magenta crosshairs here, and uh, flight director is also flight director mode is highlighted in green. And uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and enable LNAV lateral navigation mode because we will be basically flying the uh, the flight plan as entered into the flight management computer uh, pretty much as soon as we take off. Uh, so our MCP looks good for now, I think. Let's go to the transponder here. Uh, this would this would be a number that we would squawk based on, it would be provided by ATC. Um, let's just pick a random number here and uh, 
we won't turn the transponder on. We'll just have it there. It's in standby now. And I think we're good for now. So at this point, I'm comfortable pushing back. So just as there were fuel trucks and uh, catering trucks standing by to service the aircraft, there should be a tug around here somewhere. We're going to push back with our tail to the left and we are clear. So let's call for the pushback to the left. And indeed, here comes our tug, and it is so determined, it is driving through brick walls and concrete and sheds. And at some point, I hope it emerges and connects to our nose wheel so that we can push back. Here it comes. And looks like we have a good connection. So it's probably waiting for us to release brakes. So as we prepare to start our engines during the pushback, I'm going to uh, return to the flight deck here. And it does look like we, we may have a legitimate warning here. It says, flight c-o-n-t and i think that means our yaw damper is not set to on so let's find that on our overhead there it is yaw damper on and all of our warnings are eliminated except for fuel and uh, we should address that momentarily here as we start our engines so i'm going to go ahead and release our parking brake parking brake is this lever down here next to the red dot. Let's see if I can uh, grab onto this. There you go. And our pushback begins. Let's start our engines. Let's start engine number one first. All right, I'm going to give fuel feed to engine one and we have one good start in one coming up get uh, exhaust temperature and uh, let's start engine two all right fuel switch up and that's two good starts so uh, while we're still pushing back here, let's uh, turn on the engine generators, and that means we can turn off the APU generator, and uh, I'll turn on the engine bleeds for the packs, and turn, whoops, turn off the APU bleed, and... Uh, that means as we complete our pushback that uh, we can turn the APU off. And let me turn the seatbelt sign on as well. Okay, so there goes the tug. Let's set brakes for a moment. Wait for our tug to drive away. Okay, so in uh, preparation for our taxi, I'm going to turn taxi light on. And uh, let's see, MCP looks good, but I forgot to arm the auto throttle earlier. So auto throttle arm, flight director on. Going to set our auto brakes to RTO. RTO stands for rejected takeoff. So if we uh, abort our takeoff by throttling down uh, below a certain airspeed on takeoff, it will apply the brakes for us to stop us on the runway. And uh, we set our transponder earlier, but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn the transponder to uh, alt off from standby. 
and uh, I'm going to set our flaps to five, so that should be three notches. Accidentally set the trim wheel and set, so we'll fix that. But three notches of flaps to flaps five. There it goes flaps one, two, and five. And let's make sure that we didn't uh, change our trim in an adverse way, so let's see. Put it back to the way it was before. All right. So I think uh, we are good. I'm going to just go ahead and release brakes now, and we will commence our taxi. I'm just going to give the uh, engine a little bit of encouragement here. And then we'll be on idle the rest of the way. And at this point, I would hope that uh, in a real flight situation, the flight attendants would have done the uh, safety briefing at this point because this is going to be a very, very short taxi to runway 15 right. I'm just going to make this turn here. American 1693, cross runway 15 left, and monitor tower 128.8, good day. Cross on 5 left, monitor 28.8. I'm just going to check out this red sign here, make sure it says 15 right, which it does. And taxiway Lima, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. And there's the runway threshold, so I'm just going to stop short for a moment. All right, uh, so taxi lights will go off and then we illuminate all of our landing lights for takeoff. And I'm gonna set our transponder to alt on now. And let's align with runway 15 right. Okay, so as I taxi onto the runway, I just want to explain what's going to happen next. Um, I'll probably set the brakes until I finish with this uh, brief explanation, but uh, once I release brakes, we're going to set power to about 60%, wait for the engines to stabilize, then we'll go full thrust, and... Uh, We'll rotate it around 140 knots. Uh, normally the V-speeds would be calculated in the flight management com computer, but that doesn't appear to be the way x Mobile works. Let me finish aligning with the runway here, and then I'll finish my explanation here briefly. So, um, and I'll start this little clock here, which is at zero and uh it will count up from zero it'll tell us how long we've been in the air um i can also show zulu time here that means it's 1706 hours 506 p.m in greenwich and uh all of our time estimates will be in that zone going forward and then uh, uh when we uh, rotate uh we will uh, raise the landing gear as soon as we see a positive rate and uh, we'll go VNAV climb thrust at around 1,000 feet. We'll start making our turn here. It's going to be a left turn initially and then uh, a long right turn, that 180 degree turn. And um, at some point, uh, we, uh, our objective is to go from flaps five all the way back to flaps up. And we'll do some after takeoff checks. I'll uh, engage the autopilot and the computer will be uh, controlling things for much of the flight from that moment forward. All right, brakes released. I'm gonna set about 50 to 60% here. Engine stabilized. Takeoff thrust. 
baby. <laughs> Thrust is set. Airspeed coming alive. Probably rock and roll, but I like it. 80 knots. And I guess that our V speeds here. V1, VR, V2, rotate and positive rate gear up. And I'm just going to lower our nose a little bit here, let our airspeed start accumulating 400 uh, feet. So we can start our turn. And uh, 1,000 feet. VNAV climb thrust. And I'm going to start turning here. Flight director is pretty well useless uh, from what I've uh, learned here. It's telling me to basically dive into the ground right now, which I'm not going to do. But I am going to raise our flaps to uh, one. And I'm just going to fly according to the HSI. And uh, let's go flaps up. I'm going to continue our turn here. And let's go autopilot. Command A. All right. So the autopilot is in control of the aircraft. We are at 4,000 feet. Climbing through... 5,000 and right now it's just sort of hunting and pecking and trying to get us onto this path here as you see indicated in the HSI our next waypoint is BRRO which we went over in our departure procedures briefing and we are four nautical miles less than a minute away we're through 7,000 feet now Eight thousand over the water. Now the uh, the the turn is going to take us back over land. And as we reach ten thousand, per the constraints that we programmed into the FMC, we're at two hundred forty knots below ten thousand, and we should accelerate to two hundred ninety knots. And you can see in the primary flight display the target airspeed which is in magenta uh, changed to 290 and uh, we're now intercepting 290 knots on the speed tape we're above 10,000 feet so I'm going to turn off all of our landing lights now and uh, we continue this long right turn part of our departure procedures the other things in the primary flight display I mentioned these these uh, this magenta cross here is our flight director and uh, we have our speed on the left in knots but uh, we have uh, a mock reading 0.565 is a percentage of the speed of sound in the lower left and I forgot to start my timer but I'll do that now we'll just pretend I started uh, when we began our takeoff roll so uh, at this point we could do after after uh, takeoff checks uh, whoops gear is uh, up there's no way to turn it off I don't believe uh, flaps are up we turned our landing lights off. We are 17,000 feet here. Uh, our magenta target altitude, which I entered into the MCP, is 31,000 feet. That's our cruising altitude. Our there's a there's another little secondary gauge over here to the right that says uh, 3,900. That is our. Uh, our vertical speed right now it's positive which means we're climbing at 3800 feet per minute and STD is uh, the, the barometric pressure that uh, dictates our altitude reading 
Right now it's set to 29.92 um, inches. We're going through 20,000 feet, so uh, this is such a short flight. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the fasten seatbelt sign. This may be a good time. We would normally make an announcement and say, uh, don't get up for too long, uh, stretch your legs or use the lav and uh, otherwise return to your seats. And it looks like we've finished our long 180 degree turn. And um, it's just zeroing in on this horizontal situation indicator HSI. As I mentioned, the next waypoint is in the upper right. It's in Magenta, it's Kenwe. It's 1.5 nautical miles away and 0.2 minutes, so just about 15 seconds. And uh, this is, as I'm sure you've gathered by now, simply uh, almost like a GPS overhead map in your, in your car. There's a range here uh, right now of 160 nautical miles, um, and we can control that with this knob over here and I just reduced the range to 40 knots the uh, current leg from the legs page is highlighted in magenta and then um, the uh, ground speed and true airspeed you'll notice the ground speed is significantly different from the indicated airspeed which is basically the speed of the air as it travels over uh, the wings, the ground speed is, is, the, is, the, is our actual speed uh, traversing versus the ground. Um, if we look at our progress page on our flight management computer, um, we see our last waypoint, which was Kenwe, and our distance, we're moving away from it, so the distance is going up, and we see our distance to the PATS uh, navigational aid, which uh, we will be reaching in just a couple of minutes. Our top of descent is only 57 nautical miles away. That's at uh, 1723 Zulo, and right now we're at 1716. So our descent will begin in approximately seven minutes. We're climbing through 28,000 feet right now at a rate of 2,600 feet per minute. So we should be reaching cruising altitude in less than two minutes. It's a beautiful day. And the top of descent is represented by this little green dot, which you may be able to barely see. It shows that uh, it is just around 50 nautical miles away. And uh, our current heading is 277. There's our altitude chime indicating that we're 1,000 feet away from our target altitude. So we want to monitor this. So, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've seen this autopilot do some weird things in the, in the brief uh, time I've had with it. So we want to make sure that we level off, first of all, 31,000 feet. And we also want to make sure that our target cruise speed, which is 300 knots, 0.8 Mach, at flight level 310 that that is reached and you can see that 0.8 is now the target speed indicated in magenta in the upper left corner of the PFD and hopefully it will stop there that will tremendously increase my faith in uh, in the autopilot so uh, as we wait for our descent into the New York area, I'll just uh, switch to the MCP, the mode control panel. This is basically the controls for the, for the auto flight uh, functionality of the aircraft. So there are two uh, uh, autopilot command switches here, an A and a B. Um, you're only going to have one activated at a time except on an auto land in which you would activate both and they would both need to be in agreement with each other. 
And uh, there's another autopilot mode, it's kind of like an au a partial autopilot mode where you, you kind of give some manual inputs and then it maintains um, those, those control inputs. There's a vertical speed which we can control. We control our rate of climb or descent when it's negative. Um, and the the VS button, you if you press that in conjunction with the with an input of vertical speed, it, the aircraft will uh, will start descending or climbing at that rate. Uh, we have the altitude hold uh, mode activated right now, which keeps us at 31,000 feet. I can change the altitude. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and and change our altitude to. 1900 and because we have the hold button because we have the, the hold button illuminated right now it's not going to descend unless i hit the level change button the level change button would uh would uh descend to the target altitude at whatever speed was input here and right now there's no speed inputted in the in this IAS window because uh, it is flying according to the uh, the speeds inputted into the FMC. I just want to make sure we're 27 nautical miles away from top of descent here. So there's an approach button here that would be used to fly an ILS approach. Uh, and we'll uh, we'll talk about that later. The heading select button. Um, we typically like to keep the, the uh, heading window set to our current heading in case we have to take over and specify a heading and have the aircraft fly that heading. Uh, it, to do that, we would, we, would, we would click heading select. But right now, we're in lateral navigation mode, which means we're flying whatever heading the flight management computer tells us to. And uh, then we have our auto throttle and our flight director. Of course, auto throttle, as the name implies, if it's armed, it enables, uh, depending on which mode we select in the MCP, it enables the aircraft to fly, um, to, uh, to adjust the throttle itself autonomously based on, uh, based on the inputs here in the MCP or in the case of VNAV, uh, based on the uh, target speeds and altitude constraints inputted in the FNC. So it looks like we are around maybe 17 nautical miles away from, 16 actually, away from top of descent. So the way the uh, flight management computer um, managed descent would work is that we would take our sails theoretically out of altitude hold and the flight management computer would just start to descend at the right time. If we go to the descent screen, we can see the uh, target speed on descent is gonna be 290 knots or 0.74 Mach and then 250 knots below 10,000 feet. And we could hit the descend now button to start descending. But I've seen this, um, this, uh, autopilot do some very weird things in my limited experience with this sim and I don't trust it so I'm going to take us out of VNAV and which will uh, put us into a, a, a speed mode that we control I'm just going to reduce our speed down to 290 which is our program target speed for the descent and when we reach top of descent which should be in the next minute here we're five nautical miles away i'm going to show you how the level change button works and we will start our descent manually all right two nautical miles away from descent and we've reached top of descent, so I'm going to hit the level change button. And uh, if I did that right, we should see our altitude start dropping. We could make a cabin announcement at this point if we were uh, if this were a real flight, saying we started 
our initial descent. Now you can see our descent rate is really, really, really aggressive here. It's 4,000 feet per minute. That's actually really, really fast. It may actually be a bit uncomfortable for our passengers. So we could moderate that using the vertical speed button here. But really the whole point of um, allowing the, uh, the computer to control the descent would be that the computer has all of these uh, altitude and speed settings uh, programmed for each waypoint. For instance, at Nelly, we want to be at flight level 277, 290 knots, and then at by the time we reach Valerie, which is almost 70 nautical miles away, we want to be at uh, 11,422 feet. So uh, if we allow the flight computer to moderate this, that might actually be better. Uh, if it if it will work, but I want to if we do it, uh, we're gonna have to monitor it. So I'm gonna hit the VNAV button and see if uh, uh -huh. okay. No Siri, I don't want you to do. Anything. I didn't get that. Yeah. All right. So so it's actually gonna try and increase. It looks like. Uh, in altitude because we're probably a little bit below our descent profile but that's okay let's see if it does this correctly so it's making a turn to intercept the our next waypoint is going to be that uh, heart arrival okay it doesn't look like it's intercepting the speed, so I hit the speed button and hopefully it says it's it, it's going to use FMC speed. So let's see if it increases speed to 290 knots and then stops there. And indeed, it looks like it's going to work. So that's good news so far. So far, so good. And uh, again, next waypoint, Bowery. We want to be going 290 knots. And we want to be at 11,000 feet. And we're 56 nautical miles away. We're at 26,000 feet. So we have another 15,000 feet to descend in 55 nautical miles. So I think that's reasonable. So as we've begun our approach, The, the heart of our descent and uh, uh, fasten seatbelt sign will remain illuminated for the remainder of the flight. All right, uh, since we are at the heart of our descent, let's start talking about the descent. So we already reviewed our, uh, our arrival into LaGuardia, but uh, let's take a look back since I don't have the approach plates in front of me. Look at our and knit ref page here, the arrival data. 
So, and I think this matches the approach plates if I recall perfectly. It's an ILS 22 approach, runway elevation of 20 feet. The uh, bearing of the runway is at a heading of 225 degrees. So I'm gonna set our course to 225 for both myself and the first officer. And uh, let's, uh, let's see, the ILS frequency is 110.5. So as we said, our navigational radios are down here. So let's find 110.5. Whoa. Okay, this is not gonna work. All right, from standby to active, and let's see if we can do this more easily on the first officer side. Okay, yeah. 110.5 is active on both. And uh, let's see, we'll set our auto brakes to three. I think the, uh, we don't wanna do max because max would literally, uh, it could cause damage to the passengers because it's so aggressive. But, uh, but three is really warranted here, even though that in itself is aggressive because the runways at LaGuardia are just so, so short, 7,000 feet. Uh, we need to get this plane down, and we need to get it down in a hurry. Uh, and I don't think, it looks like our descent has been smooth. We didn't need our, our uh, spoiler, so I'm going to arm the speed brakes. And now we're descending through 13,000 feet. And let's see, did we make it? We are seven nautical miles away from Valerie, and we're supposed to be at 11,422 feet. We're at 13,000, so... Okay, we just got a fuel warning here. We have 4.6 thousand pounds. We, we haven't even burned through half of our fuel yet and you burn through most of it on the climb out. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good about fuel. So we can just ignore that. And true to form, we are at Valerie approaching Basie and we want to get down to 9,000 feet. And so we want to be, we're probably going to arrest our rate of descent here to, uh, for the, uh, the nose to come up a little bit and, uh, and hit 240 knots as our target airspeed. You can see the airspeed has already uh, been reduced to 240 in response to the constraints we'd input it into the uh, to the fmc which is 250 knots below 10,000 and a target of 240 knots for our next waypoint so let's see if we make it i think we're okay so far we just need to boogie and uh we're below 10,000 feet, so let's illuminate our landing lights here. All right. Okay, we want to be at 5,200 feet. And didn't really have a chance to go over the overhead panel, uh, but if we have a chance uh, to to review any of that, we will. For now, I'm just going to leave it alone and concentrate on this. So that is the um, this is the the Long Island uh, Long Island Sound in front of us and uh, we're going to come out you know right before we reach that body of water i believe is when we make a right turn out to uh that should be uh city of new york out uh this peninsula should basically come to a tip 
which should be Manhattan Island and beyond that you have uh, the the bay you have the Hudson River here and uh, Statue of Liberty and all and uh, that sort of thing so let's see down to 8,000 feet we've reached our target speed we're 10 nautical miles away and we're supposed to be at 5,200 feet and we're not <laughs> at 5,200 feet quite yet, but I trust our computer to get us where we need to be. If it's not in a hurry, I'm not in a hurry. So the only two things uh, I want to point out on this, uh, this overhead panel, which might be of interest, you have your flight data recorder controls here. Um, Passenger oxygen, that's interesting. Uh, our inertial reference system display, which keeps track of our, of our location, irrespective of uh, GPS or navigational beacons. And then uh, we have our ELT as well. That's our emergency locator transmitter. If we, if we were to have an accident, shall we say, an impact with the ground would automatically activate this. So in the meantime, it's armed so that that will occur automatically and if I flip this switch it uh, it would actually turn it on immediately so let's take a look at how we're doing here we're at 6,000 feet four nautical miles away it looks like we're gonna be exactly where we wanted to be should hear an altitude chime here because we should be well no we, we won't hear an altitude chime because we're not a thousand feet away from our programmed altitude so we're about to make this right turn here and when we make this right turn we're going to make this right turn um, over to fly basically over the bronx and then over the the, the east river um, we should be intercepting the 222 radial here or 225. There we are, we're at 5,000 feet and now we're descending to... Should be descending at 1,900 and once we reach 1,900, we will be uh, at our glide slope intercept altitude and uh, we can configure the aircraft for final approach. See, is there anything else here that we haven't covered that's of interest here? Ah. Let's see. We have our cabin altitude here. We have our pressure adjacent system. Um, all of this has to do with, uh, with pressurization and uh, then we have our, uh, our fuel pumps which we already covered, our electrical systems, our hydraulics, our anti-ice which we're not using, um, but it's not necessary, we'd only use that during an approach. And, uh, and then we have uh, this little indicator here tells us uh, whether we're, what kind of voltage we're getting out of our different systems like our generator, Gen 1, APU of course is off, and then our Gen 2. So all interesting stuff. And then we have our lights, our landing lights are on. And uh, we're good to go. So we're currently descending through 3,000 feet and we will this time hear a genuine altitude chime at around 2,900 feet, indicating that we are 1,000 feet above our final altitude of 1,900 feet. There's our altitude chime, 2,900 feet for 1,900. And we're four nautical miles away from Yeoman, and then another five miles to Greco, which is our glide slope intercept point. So as soon as we get down to, we're already out of VNAV mode, we're in speed. So, uh, 
Once we're stable at 1900, I'm going to start slowing her down. We're at 240 knots right now. And I'm just going to guess at what the flap speeds ought to be. We're in altitude hold mode. So let's just slow her down to around 210. Okay, you should be able to see. There's there's the airport right there in front of us. Okay, and uh, let's go uh, flaps one. The flaps I call out may be different from uh, from what it says on the right. Let's go ahead and go to uh, flaps five now. And uh, okay, uh, I'm actually just going to fly the rest of this manually. So, uh, autopilot disengage. Whoa. Full flaps, flaps 30, that's the landing flaps, final flaps, and I'm going to start lining her up for the runway here, and, uh, and let me zoom in here, get a good view of the runway, so it looks like we're on glide right now, so let me increase the power a bit here, keep us on glide, because I think we're going to drift a little bit low okay. here, and we have indeed. So let's see here. All right. Looks like I'm just going to use the Pappy lights. Looks like we are slightly above at 1,000 feet and looks like we're right on right now Put a little bit more power here okay Don't want to mess with the power too much because we're pretty much on. Took us down a notch. And I'm going to try and set this thing down as soon as we can. A little bit above glide now. Okay. Firm landing, but that's okay. Auto brakes are working well, spoilers, and decelerating with reverse thrust through 60 knots. Now manual braking. Thirty knots. All right, let's take a look at that horrible landing. All right.
So one problem was we were a little bit high here. And uh, initially a little bit past, I pulled back a little bit of power and then uh, started flaring here, went to idle, didn't flare that much. And then, and then so he, yeah, it was a, that, actually that wasn't bad at all. We wanted to, to get down below, uh, we wanted to get down by the time we hit those, uh, those two hash marks there. So if we drifted any further, we probably, you can see how short this runway is. Even with Auto Brakes 3, um, we, we really used almost all of the runway there. Amazing. So let's see, we can see what this would have looked like if you were a passenger. I'm sure if you're familiar with LaGuardia Runway 22, you would be, uh, this will be a familiar sight to you. Not bad. There's other views we can do. All right, let's go back to our cabin view and let's resume, let's start our taxi. Let's vacate the runway and start our taxi. All right, here we go. Three two at the four, three one, seven, eight, holding on four. Literally at three one. All right, our ground speed is 24 knots, so let's try and, I'm gonna slow down just a tad here and vacate. As soon as possible. Okay, I'm going to retract our flaps. And I don't know anything about this airport, so. So let's uh, turn off our landing lights and turn on our taxi lights. Oops. Mike, but, uh, looks like, uh, Start the more is occupied and where you want us to uh, wait it out. Atlanta? <laughs> I hear that. And, uh, uh, you know what, you can, uh, let's do that. Left turn on hotel, right turn on teacher right, hold short of Juliet. Left turn on hotel, right turn on teacher right, hold short of Juliet, south south, all seven. Mercury 42 on 9, you're in the next contestant. Let's turn on hotel, right turn on teacher right, hold short of Juliet. The first place that comes to mind. I bet you you're in Lima Alpha ready to taxi. Yeah, Lima Alpha, I'm sorry, sir. Delta 2639, three one left. Taxi left, Bravo. I don't want to go too far here, so let's see. Bravo, Julia, 31 left, Delta 2639. Let me turn off here. Traffic you see on the runway to your left is staying on the runway, waiting for gate. Tower is 23 north. 45. 
Breaking 181, cross 4 left to Julia. Traffic you see off the left on the runway is waiting for a gate. Very good. Breaking 181, cross 4 left, 23.9 Kennedy Grand, it's the Speedbird 40 Foxtrot, and 6 for Crescent. Speedbird 40 Fox, heavy, push back, approve it. Push back, approve, sir, Speedbird 40 Fox. Over 2639, cross 4 left, monitor tower 1239. Clear to cross, 4 left, monitor tower 1239, Delta 2639, good night. Over 2346, you mean those two open gates in there, and none of those are good enough, huh? Uh, they're good enough for us. And uh, let's pick uh, the same way as we do. Uh, any old gate. Get, uh, let's see. And, uh, let I don't know what uh, terminal these gates are at. But uh, I guess this is where we're parking. Let's see here. Okay. Let me come over here. Hey, I guess there's a, uh, seven five so we can make a proper Alpha. turn. Yeah, you're like number three to go in there, and that piece of the ramp is creating such a disaster for me right now. It's yeah. going to be a couple minutes for you. Okay, let us know. Yep, only be, should, should only be a couple more minutes. Roger that. And you know what, on the 407, this is good. Right on Juliet now, join Alpha, and you can hold behind everybody else. I'm going to turn Juliet off Alpha, our uh, taxi lights. Lady 101, Emmy Grand, where do you want to the ramp? Lady 101. Lady 101, go ahead. Yes, sir, where do you want to the ramp tonight? Uh, we're just calling them. Uh, we asked us to call Fortune Golf. Okay. Looks, Looks like we're going to be parking at Delta 3, D3. I don't know whether that makes sense, but uh, that's where we're parking. And this is going to be a really bad parking job, but that's okay. There's traffic to your left. Vehicle, vehicle on the left of the taxiway. Is this the car next to JetBlue? Yes, exactly. Delta 208, fully ready, leave my alpha. Brown, can I do? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's the way he's good to go on my way. Okay, Clay, do you want to have you continue taxi? Clay, do you want to want taxi to the ramp? All right, so let me uh, set, the, set the parking brake and uh, let's uh, turn the seatbelt sign off so that, uh, yikes, uh, there we go. So that we can start uh, deboarding, and uh, let me turn the APU generator on. We can turn the engine generators off, and now that the engine generators are off, let me cut the fuel switches, which should turn off both engines. We should start to spool down now. Here they go. Okay, we can turn our uh, transponder to standby. And uh, let me just turn off. strobe, beacon lights, and uh, I'm turning the packs off, and hydraulics off. And at this point, we could turn the standby power and the battery off, but I'm just going to keep the APU and the battery running here at the gate. And... Uh, The, uh, the maintenance folks can uh, can make the next move. So again, uh, 
Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial and this journey from Boston to New York. And uh, I hope that you, uh, you learned something and that uh, you can join me next time. Until then, March W13 signing off. Goodbye.